Okay, in this video, I'm going to answer some questions that I received from a nursing student. Her name is uh, Laramar. I hope I'm saying it right. She just got her LPN license from Robert Morgan um, LPN program, and she is currently getting her RN from Miami Dade College. So she had an assignment, um, or has an assignment at Miami Dade, where she is supposed to interview an RN and ask them 10 questions, which I have here in front of me, and she asked if I would answer them. So I thought it might be nice if I made a video where I answer them so that other people who are interested in the answers to the same questions could benefit from my answers as well. So I'm just going to go through these 10 questions and haven't prepared a whole lot. So I'm just kind of going off the cuff here. So the first question is, what is your name and what are your credentials? So I'm Kathy Parks. I'm an RN. So I have a, my bachelor's. So I'm a BSN. And then I'm also a certified wound care nurse, so that those little initials are CWCN. And then I'm a public health nurse as well, so that's PHN. So I, and then the next question is, how long have you been a registered nurse? So I've been a nurse for a little over three years. Being a nurse is a second career for me, so I have a previous degree in computer science engineering that I got a long time ago uh, from the University of Virginia. I worked as an IT manager for Procter & Gamble for a number of years before I took some time off to raise kids and then I went back to school for nursing. So this is a second career for me and I've been an RN now for three years and like three months or so. Um, would you kindly describe your daily tasks? Okay. so. I work as a certified wound care nurse at Scripps Encinitas Hospital, and I'm part-time there. So I work two days a week currently there, and I handle a variety of tasks. So when there are patients in a hospital who have wound vacs, so um, a wound vac, the official name is negative pressure wound therapy. So if they have big gnarly wounds that require a wound vac, then I'm the one who does the dressing changes for them three days a week, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those dressing changes are fairly involved often. They take one to two hours, sometimes three hours, depending on how many wounds and um, how many different areas we're wound vacing. So I handle all those on the days that I'm in the office. If there aren't a lot of wound vacs on the days I'm in the office, then I also do wound or ostomy consults. So I'll be brought out to see a patient, to look at a wound or to like stage a pressure injury, write wound care orders, just plan, like develop a plan of care for the patient in terms of their wounds. I help a little bit with ostomy care and teaching, but my partners um, primarily do that. So I'm more focused on wounds and wound vacs. Um, in terms of my strengths and weaknesses. So I have to say that just my personality is I'm a kind of a perfectionist. So I'm very thorough in terms of um, the work I do and like my charting, like very particular and thorough with how I do those things. I feel like my communication skills are strong, um, both like verbally and written, like with charting. Um, I'm also like a very strong patient advocate. So if the patient is needing some kind of attention or needs some kind of intervention that I feel is not being made, then I'll definitely reach out to the doctor, you know, to the hospitalist, to the surgeon, to the nurse, whoever it is I need to reach out to to make sure their needs are met. So um, I'm good at that. And I also really just like um, maintaining a fun work environment. So not only with my um, my partners on the wound care team, but just with the patients too. It's, it's always great if you can get a smile and a laugh and just kind of have as much fun as possible while you're caring for a patient. Um, you know, within reason. I mean, they're in the hospital, they're sick, but um, often they like to joke around or just have fun talking. And, and being a wound care nurse, since I'm in there for an hour or two sometimes, I really get to know them and we can have a lot of fun. So I'd say those are my strengths. Um, and then weaknesses, um, I have a hard time saying no sometimes. So I'm like a, a people pleaser 
and I know there's probably a lot of other people out there like that too. So um, I need to maybe sometimes do a better job of maintaining boundaries. Like, so if I'm coming in and do one thing, I, I end up getting sucked in, sucked into more tasks or, or helping the nurse with other things. And I like to do those things, but um, sometimes it's more appropriate to say no, like if I've got all these other wound care tasks I need to do. So um, being a people pleaser isn't always a good thing. Um, I'm also not, um, I don't like being spread like really thin and running around with my head cut off, right? So when I was a new grad RN, I worked nine months on like a med surge telly floor and it was pretty crazy. Patients are very sick. You have four patients at a time. And I felt like I was always um, just trying to get meds passed on time. And I couldn't take a step back and really look at the patient's overall clinical picture and be able to be a strong advocate for them because I, I felt like I was just fighting fires and trying to get meds passed. Um, and that's just not a comfortable place for me to be. Um, I did well, I did really well as a nurse there, but I'd have to say that it didn't really um, make me feel good inside. Like I much more appreciate my role as a wound care nurse that I have time and then I can be a stronger advocate for the patient and kind of see the bigger picture. So um, I'm not like I probably wouldn't be well suited for the emergency room where there's like running around and codes and like just kind of triaging stuff. I, I kind of prefer a more controlled environment for me. So, um, so I'd say like the people pleasing thing is not my strongest quality. It's probably a weakness at some points and, um, and just me not liking or, um, liking operating in a less structured, crazy environment. Okay. Next question. What advice would you give an aspiring registered nurse? So, um, I guess my first piece of advice is just, you know, hang in there with nursing school. Nursing school is brutal, um, but you can do it. You can absolutely do it, and I'm here to help you get through it. Um, so you just need to stay really focused on trying to master the material because that stuff's going to really be applicable when you become a nurse. Make sure um, as you, once you get your license, take your test and pass and everything, just make sure you ask lots and lots of questions um, and just never stop learning, right? There's just so much to learn. So if you're an aspiring nurse, focus on your studies, do lots of practice tests, ask lots of questions, really try to, you know, just survive really and get through that program and learn as much as you can so you can do well on your test. And of course, um, my resources are here to help you as well. Okay, how do you respond to working under pressure? Well, um, if, I feel like if things are kind of out of control and there's a lot going on, then I just need to sit down and develop a plan. Like here's what I'm actually gonna be able to tackle, right? Like you have to be realistic. You're only one person and I work an eight hour shift, so that's, that's eight hours. And my hospital system, they don't really support overtime unless there's like a really urgent need. So I really just have to prioritize, you know, my patients and try to schedule things out and just come up with a plan. And that plan helps me to perform better under pressure. Um, also, uh, just in terms of, it's important to engage in like self-care and so that you can perform under pressure. So I work out, I work out at the gym twice a week. I go walking and running and I really rely on that to help me with like my mental health and just being able to manage pressure and all the um, craziness that comes at the hospital. So have a plan, take care of yourself um, so that you're better prepared. Okay. What, according to you, are the qualities of an ideal registered nurse? So there's so many different qualities that make an ideal registered nurse, but probably the most important ones, in my opinion, are that you really care about your patients, right? Like you care about their well-being. You really want to see them get better, you know, if that's the care plan. You know, sometimes we have hospice patients and we have to care for those patients in a different way. But you really got to just love people and caring for people and you just really care, right? And that's one component. And then the other component I think that's really important is just being safe, right? Like not operating out of your scope of practice, making sure you're like 
double, triple checking your meds, making sure that you're not hurting the patient, that you're just being really, really safe with your nursing practice. And, um, and, that, and then the last piece I'd say is just communication skills. Be able to coordinate with multiple resources on the floor and just communicate really effectively so that you can get the best possible care uh, to your patient. So I think those are the three like main qualities I'd say make a really good registered nurse. Um, can you describe a typical day for someone in like my position as a wound nurse? So my day may be a little different than a typical wound nurse. So often wound nurses handle both wounds and ostomies. So a typical day for me or my partners is to come in and see how many wound consults we have for the day and what those are. So some days we may have a handful, sometimes we might have like 15, 20 wound consults. And then we also have to look at like our follow-up list, what other patients do we need to see who aren't new patients, and then kind of prioritize, plan our day. Um, so we schedule out our patients, um, typically before 7.30 a.m. We kind of plan out who we're gonna see when, and we create a schedule. My partner will give me a copy of the overall schedule and let me know who has wound vacs for me to see. So there's some planning done. Um, for me, another part of my job is to do a pressure injury audit every time I work. So that takes about an hour, maybe, you know, give or take, depending on the number of patients in the hospital with pressure injuries. But so I do an audit and I check for people's charting on pressure injuries, which are like bed sores. And that's a really important thing for hospitals because if a patient comes in um, and gets a hospital acquired pressure injury, it's a big deal for the hospital. It's a lot of cost and it's, you know, not a good thing for the patient as well. So. I kind of keep track of all the patients with pressure injuries, make sure we have you know good orders written for wound care, make sure that nurses are following those orders and charting that they're following those orders, um, and then I'm on the lookout for any hospital-acquired pressure injuries. So I kind of do a quick audit, and I send the results of that audit to the supervisors and charge nurses on each floor on my hospital. And then after that, I go see patients. I go on the floor and I follow the schedule I put together at the beginning of the shift. So I'll um, get the patient pre-medicated, I'll come and do their, their wound care, I'll do like any kind of teaching or discharge preparation, you know, each patient's a little different. So, um, so then I just go on the floor and then try to get all my patients done and then clock out. So that's kind of a typ typical day for me. My partner, they may do more ostomy teaching. So they'll do wound care consults, but they'll also go see patients who have new ostomy appliances um, and help teach them how to empty their bag or how to change their bag. It's a pretty traumatic thing when a patient gets an ostomy um, as you can imagine, and sometimes it's not like a planned thing. They came in with abdominal pain and distension, and they go to emergency surgery, and they come out with an ostomy, and sometimes they don't handle that well. So anyway, my patient, or I'm sorry, my patient, my partners um, handle more of that. I do some of that, but I am not ostomy certified currently. Um, they are ostomy certified and have more experience with ostomy teaching. In the future, I plan to get ostomy certified as well, but that's probably down the road just a little bit. Okay, how do you interact with family and patients? So whenever I um, come in the room for the first time, if there's um, family there too, I'll always introduce myself to the patient and I'll introduce myself to the family and kind of learn everyone's name. I'll see if the patient is comfortable with us discussing, you know, their wound care with the other family members there um, before I just dive right into talking to them, right? You have to um, maintain their privacy and confidentiality. Um, I'll try to really, before I like start touching the patient or doing things on the patient, I always try to just explain everything first and just reinforce that I'm gonna take my time and we're gonna do this as slowly and as painlessly as possible and if they need anything to, you know, to let me know. And I also try to just gauge how the patient wants to interact because you don't want to just treat every patient exactly the same. I have one patient who, when I'm doing her wound vac, just wants total quiet. 
she wants to go to like the zen place this happy place and just she knows i'm going to take good care of her and she just wants to just be quiet in fact she kicks her husband out because he talks too much <laughs> according to her so um she likes that i have I'd say the majority of my patients like me to kind of babble while I'm, and that's how it's been described sometimes, but kind of babble while I'm doing wound care. So they like me to distract them and just kind of talk to them or talk to them about my family or sometimes I tell them about my YouTube channel, you know, just anything to really distract them. So a lot of patients like that. Some patients want to listen to some music, you know. So anyway, every patient is different some you know are talkative and, and bubbly and some just kind of quiet so you just have to feel out the vibe right you have to feel out how they want to roll and how they want to be treated and just adjust yourself to kind of meet those needs because you're there for them so you kind of treat each patient individually and always you know respect the family and um, I don't usually have a hard time with family I think they see pretty quickly that I'm that I know what I'm doing and that I'm going to take my time and that their family members in good hands. So they, they don't, I don't usually get a hard time from family members. In fact, they're, they're great advocates as well. And I appreciate their help and advocacy for their family member. And then the last question is, um, how do you respond to an emergency situation at work? So I think the key is, um, well, I guess it depends on the emergency situation, right? So when I was a floor nurse before I became a wound care nurse, if there was like a code blue, um, I learned that chest compressions are really hard and really tiring. And I'm not like the best person to do that. I can do it and I'm trained to do it. I'm certified. But um, if there's some big guys who want to get on there and do chest compressions, I let them do that. I, I'm i better suited to like, I pick up the notebook um, where we kind of chart when the patient was found, when we started compressions, like when they start, you know, rolling in with the crash cart and giving the patient epi, I kind of chart that. I chart their vital signs. Like I'm good at like calling out, okay, did you do this? Did you do this? I'm kind of, um, I help to organize as opposed to like being the, uh, the manual, like doing the compressions and stuff. So that's how I respond to like a code blue. When it comes to wounds, occasionally I have emergency situations. So I just had one this last week. I, um, I went in to take care of a patient's abdominal wound and um, I came in and her wound vac canister is full of blood, which her wound was like pretty much dry when I saw her the last time. And her um, abdomen was completely distended. And when I pulled back that dressing, the blood was pouring out everywhere and her wound had like dehissed and if you probe you can probe all, all the way down into her abdominal cavity so and she was having a lot of pain and looked confused so this was definitely an emergency so um, I hit the call bell and um, I had the nurse come in right away I told her to page the surgeon and get the charge nurse involved so we got the surgeon up there pronto he you know uh, he realized that her wound had to his, so um, he scheduled surgery. I'm just trying to be real calm with her and reassuring that we're going to take care of this. And then really, I just put a temporary dressing in her wound, you know, no more wound vac before she would go to surgery. So again, you just want to be, you know, calm. I've had another situation where I take a wound vac off and, uh, you know, the, the wound starts spurting blood all over my gown, my yellow gown. And so, you know, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that wound um, that she just had surgery on two days ago. So she's crying because that hurts, of course. I'm putting all this pressure. So that that really stunk in terms of I don't like hurting patients. But yeah, I did the same thing. I, you know, I call the front desk, tell them I need a, I need a nurse in there right away. Um, and then I really activate them to go get the surgeon, go do all these things while I'm like putting pressure on the wound and helping to calm down the patient. So that's how I've handled like emergency situations in a wound care kind of setting is I kind of activate the nurse to get all the right people involved while I try to address the wound itself and calm the patient down. So this is a big video. Um, way easier actually just talking. Hopefully it's not too long and rambling. Hopefully those kind of stories and advice help. Um, so for those of you in school watching this, you're going to have all this fun <laughs> type of stuff happen to you when you're a nurse and you just got to get through the nursing school part. So it's worth it. 
Um, I know it's a lot of work, but you can do it. So um, hang in there and I'll see you soon on another video.